in yeah. any case, I'm not here, you know, to consult on your industry, which I don't know much about. Um, Jonathan asked me to talk about art. Who's wondering why we're talking about art in the business Creative class? Creative. Okay. Great. I will first talk about art and science and technology. You know, the, the times that we grew up, we, we are in, in our educational systems, um, we all have these majors and uh, some of them can be really specialized. And in workplaces, we have our functions. I know some of you are in operations, in sales or editorial. And I don't know about you, the, how I grew up, I always saw art and science, they are separate cultures. I, is that your, but it didn't used to be this way. We all know who this is. So was Leonardo da Vinci an artist or a scientist? Both. Yeah, he's the consummate polymath. Um, and he's not the only one in history. So this was um, the Song Dynasty, probably not known to the Western world much, but um, the Song Dynasty was pretty much on par with like the um, ancient Athens, the Renaissance, the 1900 um, uh, Vienna as one of the creative epochs. And so three out of the four ancient Chinese inventions were in, during this period. There's the, the compass, uh, gunpowder, and um, you guys are publishers. The printing technique was invented in China back in that period. Um, Shen Kuo was really was a, a scientist at the time, and he was a, he pretty much was the China's uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and scientists really doesn't quite you know, categorize him. He was um, a mathematician, astronomer, pharmacologist, cartographer, diplomat, hydraulic engineer, inventor, university chancellor, and finance minister. And in his spare time, he wrote poetry and composed music. Su Shi, Su Rongpo was a famous poet and, and painter, also a statesman, a governor. Um, he was also a polymath, another Chinese da Vinci. And these are some of the other geniuses you guys are probably more familiar with. We have Sigmund Freud, uh, who was very into archaeology. Um, Ernest Ma, who was a physicist and also a serious philosopher. Uh, of course, we have Einstein, who played music all his life. My discovery was the result of musical perception. And this is how he sees art and science. After a certain level of technical skills is achieved, science and art tend to coalesce in aesthetics, plasticity, and form. The greatest scientists are artists as well. And in fact, a recent study found that um, Nobel laureates are seven to 22 times more likely to be involved in um, uh, cross-disciplinary arts than, than other scientists. And that could include um, music, drawing, painting, writing, or, or performing. We didn't grow up that way, right? Um, and why not? Fourth Industrial Revolution, is, is that a familiar term here? So Second Industrial Revolution was a period about mass production. Um, it was the electricity age and the assembly lines. So that called for division of labor, specialization. It was reflected not only in the educational system, which, which cut kind of uh, knowledge into slices and boxes, um, but also in the workplace. It uh, favored ultra specialization. So the Renaissance man died. But now as we move into the fourth industrial revolution, it's a fusion of technologies that are blurring the lines not only between digital, physical, and biological spheres, um, but also the lines between industries. You know, GE now sees them as an industrial internet company. Um, is Airbnb a travel company, I mean, a hospitality company, or, or, an, or a technology company? So like, times like this, it calls for coalescence. Um, it's better suited, and indeed, it's re-emerging. It's emerging in the academics, People all know about MIT Media Lab? Yeah, okay. No? Yes? No. Okay. Um, Joey Ito, um, who's the director of the lab, he's a leading advocate of um, anti-disciplinary thinking. Um, as we engage in tackling harder and harder problems that require many fields and perspectives, the separation of disciplines is causing more and more damage. 
it's time for higher mission and changes needed in academic and research to allow more people to work in the wide open, wide space between disciplines, and he calls the, the anti-disciplinary space. Uh, this is a professor of biomedical engineering at Harvard who founded La Laboratoire, uh, first in Paris and then brought back to, uh, to Cambridge as well, as well. So this is where artists and designers, they um, experiment at the frontier of, 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 of science. Quite often that's the first steps towards larger scale cultural, humanitarian, and commercial works of art and design. In Stanford, where I work, um, this is the new president, was a French Canadian, a neuroscientist, but he has um, recognized the arts as the presidential priority for the next, um, uh, at least next, the next decade. So uh, arts will be at the heart of strategic planning for the future. Um, in research institutions uh, are adopting artists in residence programs. This is artists in residence program show at SETI, the search for extraterrestrial um, intelligence in um, Mountain View. This is Jill Tata. Anyone seen the movie uh, Contact? So she was the one who inspired um, the role played by Jodie Foster, a famous scientist at uh, NASA and, and a huge supporter of art programs. Um, it's not only in the US, in fact, uh, there are probably more in Europe. This is CERN, they have a new arts program. And um, as the, the head of that program comments, uh, it's, it's really not just about commenting on scientific facts or illustrating science um, or communicating advanced technologies. Really, art is providing a framework for discussing the complexities that underline our contem contemporary scientific future. Um, so those are kind of space science. We also have neuroscience, this is another big field involving the art. Um, this is a, uh, the International Arts and Mind Lab um, at uh, Johns Hopkins Brain Science Institute, a multidisciplinary initiative accelerating what they call the field of neuroesthetics. So they study the, comb the, the, the combination of neuroscience and applying in, in the environment, um, arts, music, architecture. Um, there are, this is just one example of individuals, artists and scientists collaborating. Col Cornelia Parker and uh, Konstantin Novoselov, his Nobel winner back in, was it 2010 or um, if you guys remember, for his work in graf discovery in graphene. And um, he's a huge art lover. I don't know if that's well, widely known. Uh, even his even uh, practices uh, Chinese calligraphy and Chinese Chinese art. And these are the, the all of the science and technology trends transforming the 21st century: robotics, VR, AI, machine learning, synthetic biology, um, 3D printing, big data, neuroscience, genomics, all the CRISPR gene editing. Uh, it's just mind-boggling what's happening in science and technology. And that's, that's why um, our environment has become so unpredictable, so volatile, and so complex. So what art does, it, it conceptualizes, visualizes, synthesizes, of course, it criticizes, um, and it, it really can be a partner with science and technology to, to shape the world together. We can't really just have science and technology. We need, we need art to bring it together and to, to also make sure that it goes the way that humanity really wants. Um, just like this poster said, it was back in New York World's Fair in 1939, the world we are now seeing is a vision. It's an artistic conception which may undergo many changes as it develops in the great realities of tomorrow. So this is all kind of for the world, it's for the society, but it also applies to individual businesses, to innovation as well. Before I go there, I, maybe I'll just take a, a, a detour since I came from Silicon Valley and cast uh, a perspective on the valley. 